thank you very much for coming, everybody. So uh, today it is uh, my great pleasure and honor to be able to introduce Professor Keiichi Maeda. Uh, Professor Maeda uh, did his PhD at Kyoto uh, quite a while ago. He's been a very experienced researcher. And I just today just learned that actually he worked on numerical relativity right at the beginning of numerical relativity. And afterwards he went on to work on cosmology and, and, um, and inflation and became a professor at Waseda University in Tokyo. And only he very rest recently retired, but the fact that he's still here talking to us says a lot about his, his uh, devotion to science and about spreading the knowledge that he has. So thank you very much. And please yeah. go ahead. Thank you very much for your introduction. Uh, the, uh, I also would like to thank for your hospitality here. I enjoy the staying here very much. So today, uh, I would like to talk on a uh, uh, realistic dynamical, dynamical system and gravitational waves. After a short introduction, I would like to talk on two topics. One is on chaos and gravitational waves. And the second one is a direct calculator system. <clears throat> Let me start. So, uh, the, uh, as you know, the first indirect discovery of gravitational waves uh, was given by the binary concept, which was found by uh, Carlson Taylor. And uh, it's a uh, two Newton star um, binaries uh, rotating each other. And because one is a uh, pulsar, so we know the orbit quite well. And the orbit is the elliptic and the coordinates in the and it's quite realistic, so many of those it's quite large like this. And <clears throat> the, uh, because the system is quite realistic, we expect the emission of gravitational waves and uh, the, it changes uh, the orbital period uh, because period is much faster than constant. <clears throat> and then uh, if you have the orbit change, uh, we have the shift of the periapter on time. Uh, it is expected by, by this parabolic curve, uh, if you assume emission of the wave, and then observe point uh, match to this uh, the prediction. So energy loss created by such wave is quite ugly with the uh, predictive value. So this is the direct uh, proof of the question waves. And uh, because the binary system uh, is realistic and we have the emission of gravitational waves. So uh, finally, coalesce and then forming a black hole. <laughs> so uh, as you know, the expected wave hole is the, 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 the spiral plane, uh, the sensorial plane, and a coalescence is the mix of the large emission of gravitational waves. And finally, we have the precise and more. <laughs> But uh, in the half stable binary, it's in the spiral plane. Uh, so <coughs> the amplitude is very small. So we cannot uh, directly observe it too big. And uh, the, at coalescence time, uh, we may expect large emission, but coalescence time is quite not large, 10 to 20 years longer than this one. So it's too long. So we cannot wait for this coalescence. So we have to look for the distant object. <laughs> so, <coughs> the, so this was done by LIGO uh, three years ago. And the, we know the, the, the famous, uh, <laughs> it's uh, the uh, merger of the binary black hole instead of binary neutron star. So it was surprising. <laughs> and now we have many uh, black hole mergers and also a neutron star mergers. And so, on. <laughs> so now uh, we are in the age of the gravitational wave physics and uh, astronomy. So you can test the gravitational theory, you can check the <laughs> speed of gravitational wave, also the same as the speed of light, and also uh, the, we can do some constraints on the mass of gravity. And we also know the uh, new physics at high density, the equation state at high density um, from the uh, neutron star modules. And also we can use the 
And also here, <laughs> I'm trying to discuss the, uh, the possibility of discovery of new astronomical objects or exotic astronomical objects. Uh, when we say uh, exotic, there are many possibilities, but uh, I'm not here talking about the, uh, the uh, exotic black hole or Yes, uh, the system is not uh, the neutral one. And it, we, we have only the activity and configuration is very different. And this is the idea to discuss the mechanistic kind of system. <coughs> and a simple example of the latency kind of system is just binary parts. So this is what we need. And we expect to create them. And then, uh, okay, what do we have now? We have the same wave as theory. So we uh, prepare the template by simulation and we observe the same wave. So using much data, uh, we can determine unknown parameters, parameters such as masses or the scale of the black hole. <coughs> so these are well known. But there are some questions. We may expect more complicated systems for now. <coughs> for example, even in the Newtonian gravity, two body system is very simple. They say you get around it. So analysis may be rather easy. But if we put one more part, <coughs> three body system, uh, it becomes more irregular. So uh, we expect some. Com complicated kind of and uh, here's one mistake information of the supermassive <laughs> uh, which uh, we know this is a ship with our galaxy and uh, <laughs> there's one possibility can be uh, formed by the from the system of the multiple black holes from abstraction so uh, <clears throat> the in the characteristic system, also we can have such kind of multiple systems. <coughs> so, uh, if the system is non integral, we expect to fail. Fails is a sensitive dependent on the initial conditions. If you change the initial data quite slightly, uh, the final fate becomes quite different if it fails. So, it's highly Sensitive to the initial condition. So <laughs> sometimes it's called butterfly effect. And my question here is if the dynamical system which emits the gravity away, if this, this dynamical system is chaotic, can we prepare the template for now uh, to, uh, to uh, determine the uh, parameter? <clears throat> so this is my question here. <clears throat> So then uh, I want to discuss the chaotic behavior first. Uh, in a long time ago, just so in the 1990s, there are several works on the chaos of the test particles in the strong gravitational field. <coughs> the first one is that you have two black holes and then put it in test particles to so find some chaotic chaos. And uh, there are several works. But here I want to discuss the spinning part around um, the spatial. This is uh, natural to think about. So, uh, the, so here I want to discuss the, the spinning test part in the spatial background. background the equation motion of the spinning test particle is an electric test time was discussed by Papapetro and Dixon from the report. And the, this is the basic equation. We can define four velocities here today. And we have the equation motion P, mu is the most uh, common momentum, 
and S is three, and because of the coupling between curvature and spin, but uh, uh, does not follow the geodesy. It is very weak, and also there has a definite spin. And uh, the one uh, interesting point is that the four momentum and four velocity are great. In general, it's not these are not parallel. It's parallel. Of course, sometimes it's parallel, but in general, it's not parallel. That one is key. I can change in parallel. <laughs> Uh, can you see yes. that equation of motion, the second one, yes. is postulated, right? Right. We can have other equations of motion. Sorry? The, the that that second one, yeah. Yes. It's postulated. We can have others. This is just one. Uh, one possibility. Okay. Uh, the well, depending on how to define the center of mass of this particle. Uh, the there are some discussion a uh, long time ago. And the, uh, I do not believe this guy, the Professor or Dixon, just uh, the, uh, they choose uh, the, some uh, definition of center of mass. You need, you have to fix center of mass of this, this part. Because first, what we do is just, uh, you have to extend the body first, and then just expand by multiple, and then just take a limit of 2D. Yes, single point. So uh, we have uh, there's some ambiguity to define the center of mass. And this is one choice, right? and this is consistent. Oh. And then uh, there's the ease, this kind of equation, and the, <coughs> background is just simple as well. And there are uh, four conserved quantities. Tell, tell me another thing. Dixon's work is for flat space time. No, no, no. In curved space. Time. Yeah, Dixon is curved space. Time. Yeah. Right. The, uh, this is conserved. Uh, mass is conserved, and magnitude of spin is also conserved. And from the uh, space time symmetry, energy is conserved. Uh, there's some conserved of spin. And also the three component of total angular momentum is conserved. This is the orbital angular momentum. This is coming from the screen. <laughs> so there are four uh, conserved quantities. But uh, these are not enough uh, to be an uh, uh, integral system. So just uh, the, uh, we, it's not, this is not an uh, integral system. So there are some possibility to find the chaotic behavior. So this is what we have to think about. And the, if we look at the <coughs> potential, for example, the, if spin is small, this is quite similar to usual test particle in a So just uh, this is the inlet and the axis, and this is the equation of frame, and this is uh, the potential. <laughs> And here you have a stable point. If you have to keep on the equatorial plane, you have a kind of positive potential. So at the minimum, you have a stable point. And here you have an unstable point. So this is an unstable point, and this is a stable point. <coughs> and uh, if the uh, angulometer is part, but if angulometer is small, there is no but if you include uh, a large uh, thing, if you have large thing, this is the potential change in the thing. So just uh, the, if uh, angulometer is large and P is also large, you have the Stable point here, and but unstable point uh, disappear, and then instead you have a two subtle point here. And uh, if angulometer is small, you have only one subtle point. So just uh, 
depending on the parameters. Uh, this part is uh, here. And if we have this uh, subgroup point, uh, there is a chance to find the tail to the end. Uh, it is always is passing to see near this other point, you have a kind of tail in the So, in this case, they are fine. You may find it. Yeah. And then uh, we, we looked at the uh, power paradigm, which is a cross section of the tail space. If the system is uh, completely integrable, uh, the, because of the uh, conserved quantity in a phase space, you have a solid hypersurface. And then, if you cut in some, uh, the, if you have find some cross section, if you assume some cross section, you find some closed curve. So, this is so you see, if system is integral, you have some closed and uh, then the uh. This is just 15 more. You find this kind of almost in the ground case. And if spin becomes large and dark, uh, then just this solid curve becomes uh, like this. And then. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry. Just. Um, okay. Uh, there seems to be a problem with the audio. Let me please sort it out. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, like, uh, yeah. Let's see if that sorts it. Let's try. Sorry, go on. Apologies for the for the interruption. And then, if you increase the speed, uh, this closed curve, the solid curve, and here. And then system becomes chaotic. Yeah, so this is one uh way to see chaotic behaviors. <laughs> the other way is uh, this real exponent, which is just so the uh the distance between the two uh orbits in the phase space. So x is the distance, uh dx is the distance between two close orbits in the phase space. And if time is going on, if the lambda is large, and if the orbit uh, is uh, it's just uh, the distance is very large, uh, then just the system is and chaotic between the two. It's highly dependent on each other. So uh, the, this lambda is called the Yapnoid response. We just look at the, this. Uh, distance between two orbits in phase space. And we consider three orbits. Uh, one is a near equatorial plane like this. So this is the modulation of the equator. And the, the, uh, you have another you know, five dimensions. So just a part of the five dimensions. So this is just uh, on a near the equatorial plane. And B is uh, just perfect formal perpendicular to the equatorial plane. And then C is, uh, is there some uh, southern point near here? And the uh, C is just crossing to the southern point. So just we consider these three cases. And in the first case, the case is X and Uh, 
but at some point they are positive. So that uh, if skin is large enough, the system becomes chaotic. So why is there a problem? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I don't know whether it really exists, but or not. This, uh, yeah. <clears throat> and then uh, the <clears throat> yes. So, uh, so this system can be a chaotic. So we are interested in the production way from such a system. So we discuss the uh, <clears throat> production way from such a system. And we again consider three cases. One is the nearly equatorial uh, trend, so which is almost every type of it, or happens to the equatorial And uh, see near the other one of three cases. Third case is the scale. <coughs> And uh, just if you I uh, use a total portfolio to evaluate the array, uh, you can find the amplitude and the initial range. It's kind of fun, but uh, it's, it's difficult to uh, find the difference between these two of them. The uh, one case is probably uh, this uh, case, the total pole that you obtain for one, so then just it's the answer. But for the other two cases, it's all the same. So it's a difficult to see. And we also look at the uh, waveform. Again, it's a difficult to find some difference. There's some radiation, but it's a difficult. <laughs> then uh, what we uh, consider is the energy spectrum. So this is just some, uh, for the reference. This we consider some just circular out. In psychology, you have one typical orbit here. So you find this kind of spectrum. This is the frequency. And for the elliptic orbit, case A, equatorial trend, uh, orbit trend orbit. Uh, in this case, uh, you have a, yeah, some higher harmonics. So you have mm -hmm. what else? There are some characteristic effects. And in a particular case, uh, this, the, this atom is so, uh, <coughs> the single piece here, and it is the surrounding that direction. And in a chaotic case, uh, the, it also has uh, many peaks uh, in the broad band, but uh, this is always a random it's, it's a different structure. So this is one way to distinguish the chaotic system. And after our works, uh, we discuss the Gerson uh, wave uh, using the post Newtonian equation motion to include the So if C is zero, you have a regular only. But if you include spin, all becomes quite chaotic. But if you look at this, uh, the form file map and uh, the amplitude, so these are, well, the quite similar. It's a difficult to distinguish. <laughs> and then uh, later on, we uh, uh, analyze the system again. And first, what they did is just to test quantum graphics measure. So the M2 is much smaller than the M2. And the M2 has a spin. The spin is 1.4 M1 times M2. <laughs> so in our case, this, this is the case when we find the chaotic behavior. And uh, what they find is just uh, the for some uh, the inside condition as they find chaotic behavior. This is the economic story and the ontology. And if, if you look at the spectrum uh, in the direction wave, uh, you have just uh, the random thing. 
but uh, this uh, second case, uh, you have exponent, exponent is zero. In this case, uh, you, you do not find the random peak. You have some characteristic regression. There are many things. So this is the third So in this sense, uh, they confirm our result. But point is the uh, if you know that you got this CT uh, normally by the mass square m two square, this is the result. So then the uh, this may not be natural. So they consider the there's one of my platform band with maximally speed. And uh, they do not find any health behaviors. They have no spine, always go to hell. And if you look at the spectrum of the person waves, uh, there are uh, some sharply, some characteristic triggers. But there is no health behavior in the person waves. So uh, the as a result, uh, the chaos in the coalescence of binary system may not be important, although this is a uh, non integral system. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, then, then we can may consider the other natural systems. So, one possibility is uh, the effect of multiple modes, like a black hole plus this system. So you have black hole and this, and then you have some fire. <coughs> or a uh, system of multiple black holes. <laughs> so one of the examples is three body systems. And uh, <coughs> just because of time, uh, maybe I, I speak to this one. If I have time, we, we can discuss this one. Yeah, I want to discuss this new body system too, <coughs> especially. Uh, the yeah. So we consider three body system. And there are three possibilities. If the distance between uh, these values are only the same, and this is quite chaotic. And uh, of course, it's the particular flow, and our body is a little far. And if this is quite far, the system may be unbounded to the individual body system or effectively in body system. So, in between, we may have this direct particular system. We have just the one uh, binary here, and uh, the uh, center of mass and the third body, uh, maybe the other, another uh, binary system. So, this is for the actual frequency. So, uh, semi dark uh, <coughs> of the inner binary is much smaller than the outer binary. So, we consider this case. Here, the system is equal to that of semi maybe too complicated. So we consider this, this case first. <laughs> and in this uh, direct activity system uh, in a Newtonian dynamic, uh, there is a very interesting mechanism, which is called the polarity of mechanism. Uh, in this system, uh, in some approximation, uh, if the third body is uh, enough uh, far, uh, the, just the Z component of angular momentum is going down, and Z component of angular momentum uh, is proportional to Z spine. Uh, this E E is uh, the eccentricity of inner binary, and R is uh, the uh, relative deviation between two orbital planes. So, for example, here. Uh, we have an outer orbital plane, and this is the inner orbital plane. And this is just a deviation. And, uh, <coughs> if, and this is called constant. So if uh, the I is large, uh, 
then this is this simply small. So it, we, uh, the temperature will become more cold on the And if uh, <coughs> it is small, uh, the temperature will become dry. So then this will be something very important. And interestingly, because of this third order effect, uh, this, this will become higher, of course. So it will be the oscillation between two phases. The general oscillation between the sun. But sometimes, centuries becomes large, small, and then this point to large, and again, points to small. So this uh, typical time scale has because uh, I'm time scale in some tune by the this uh, by P out is the outer of the spectrum of the field and P is the inner of the field. So this is just larger than uh, much larger than uh, outer of the field. So this is long time. And why it's interesting is the <coughs> because if the eccentricity is large, we expect large emission reduction. So this is And we look at the two effects. One is the indirect observation. And we consider the following system. We have um, two new doctors. Uh, one should be cancer. And the other one can be this is one example. And put some uh, uh, form. And uh, in this case, uh, the typical <coughs> time scale, in our video, the other video in the city, and for that reason, time scale is the because of the emission that is very much the time scale is much less. Uh, and what we are looking at for because the system may emit the drugs in way, uh, we have the cumulative shift of the periodic as, as I discussed in the video. Okay, so, so this periodic point. Uh, once we get two points, and let time remain. Of course, there are some periods of six, but uh, <coughs> the time, if we do not have any dissipation, uh, we have a um, quite regular. So, this is the initial period of periods of passing, and, uh, and then we observe this one. Uh, hence, Okay, at some time, uh, we expect time to be a P naught time then. But uh, if we have the emission of the virtual way, uh, there is a uh, <coughs> dispersion. So then uh, this time should be some different. So this uh, different is called periodic time shift. And we can uh, evaluate this one like this. Uh, if this pivot is much smaller than this, <coughs> uh, we, uh, we can, from the definition, we can evaluate this. <coughs> and uh, if pivot is constant, always constant, we can easily make the two squares. So we find the usual. So this is the final state of In the present case, what is interesting is that the eccentricity will oscillate for a long time period. Okay, so that's the, the for the previous uh, data, the eccentricity is small. And going up and then coming down. So, this you have the oscillation. 
And uh, if you look at this power of reversion rate, uh, it's been, you have this up measurement like that, one minus e squared. So, so means if e is close to one, uh, this becomes large. And also, this you can also evaluate the cumulative uh, shift using this formula. So again, you find this kind of uh, so important point is that if eccentricity becomes large, uh, you have a large uh, the initial version. So it changes the peak. So what we expect is for so if it, there is no uh, <coughs> Um, change of eccentricity, we have this kind of you know, parabolic shape. But uh, when eccentricity becomes large, you have a large emission of reversion wave. So this curve becomes thicker, and then just you have a bend here. So we expect this kind of thing. So uh, if you have three body system, and then just looking at the similar shift. Uh, we may expect uh, this kind of thing. <coughs> this is one prediction. Sorry. Yes. Uh, so, but that sort of body, the, you say that the, the oscillation is often on very long times, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's like a short, very short time. Uh, depending on the your systems. So, in this case, so this is the compared oh, okay. to this. Yeah. So, so yeah. depending on the parameter. Yeah. So uh, maybe you can ask you know, whether this case is possible or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, now, now just we are going to discuss the direct perceptions. And can we observe the direct perception wave from the system? Answer is yes, of course. In the margin case, of course, yes, because we, we observe the wave by simply by. But the question is whether we can distinguish from a simple dilatation or a highly extended body is possible. Because in a usual single binary system, we expect uh, the circular always at the collision. But in this case, we may find highly extended uh, for equalizers. But today, I want to discuss the only the <coughs> inspired phase. And in, in spiral phase, uh, the, if you look at the frequency, if you assume circular orbit, uh, frequency is in particular, even mass and the major axis. And uh, because uh, from the observable observational constraint, uh, we have some constraints like this. Frequency should be larger than 10 to the minus 4 hertz, which is coming from the uh, space algebra. <laughs> and this uh, condition is so it means that if mass is almost solar mass, uh, the area should be almost a solar radius. So unless very close binary system, it is very difficult to observe. But uh, if uh, the system is highly eccentric, uh, we may observe higher harmonics, not only in this case. So in fact, uh, in a <coughs> highly eccentric orbit, uh, the peak frequency of the emitted reduction rate power is given by this one. So this phi node is just frequency frequencies, and M is just the harmonics number of harmonics. And uh, the peak of the uh, reduction rate is coming from this, and n is evaluated at this. Okay. If eccentricity again becomes large, n becomes very large. So then, just if, uh, we can easily have uh, this constraint. So if eccentricity is close enough, the peak frequency may peak to the observed one. And this, uh, Possibility can be obtained by the quadratic mechanics. 
So this is the second point. And to analyze the many models, <laughs> yes. The but for you are just say tensor mass or tensor mass or determine the mass mass or stor mass or something like that. So just the many things. I just give you one and one. Just the same mass tensor mass black hole, but the same is that maybe it's very close. And um, if you look at this, this one, uh, the eccentricity becomes quite large. And the flat field is the same. Uh, 286. This is the So you have, a, you, you can define this situation. And then, uh, just evaluate this. So if the eccentricity is small, uh, we have really a simple one with some motivation, which is coming from the side of it. And if the eccentricity becomes large, so that we have a form based on it. And if you look at the spectrum, because there are two orbits, inner orbit and outer orbit, so if the eccentricity is small, you can But when the eccentricity becomes large, uh, the, because there are many higher harmonics up here, so that's when uh, high frequency region you have a peak of the spectrum. <coughs> this is what you get. And then um, the, uh, we discussed the evolution of part of the, the spiral. So if the eccentricity is very small, uh, the frequency, peak frequency is small, and also amplitude is also small, we can observe. And, uh, when the eccentricity becomes large, um, then it could have uh, like a 10 to um, 0 0.36. Then just it's coming, uh, this is just observable length. This is frequency, and this is length, and this is the uh, observed bound, and this is by Elisa. This is by the Tario or Shishio. Uh, if the eccentricity becomes large, uh, like a 0.36, then it's coming into the uh, observable length, and the eccentricity becomes large, the frequency is going up, and also uh, amplitude is also going up, so it's going down. And uh, as I said, eccentricity is oscillating. Then after reaching the maximum point, it's going down again, so just disappearing again. And after, uh, say, 200 days, it's coming back again. So if we have this kind of oscillation, if we have this kind of system, we, it's coming, you know, once we find this kind of object, we can wait for, say, 200 days. So we, we may see again, it again. So, uh, I just show how many. Uh, this here, the system we discuss the <coughs> uh, indirect observation in the uh, <coughs> bending in the similar to the sea. Also, for the direct observation uh, in, in spiral phases, we find the, <coughs> this kind of thing. So, observable period, some few period. So, this is one. Interesting point, that's why I discussed. So finally, just I want to point to this one. So uh, this is the inner body and the for the inner binaries, uh, the 
we did very some KPS so uh, this suppress the K rotation. So if in a binary high bigger this one, there is no K rotation. It is um, but the other case is just the for the third body, uh, it is massive. Uh, the digital precession scale becomes very important. <coughs> so effective precession time scale is modified by this uh, digital precession time scale. Digital precession is the coupling, focal is coupling, because it's coupling between uh, every one of the data. <coughs> At 1.5 pm, if the third body massive black hole is uh, spinning, we may expect a very clean precession. Size three is just a small parameter. So this is coupling between all out and for every and uh, the card body and skin. And this digital precession and clean precession becomes very important uh, for the supermassive black hole and to the <coughs> Uh, some people discuss this painting effect uh, in the and uh, this is one minus centuries. So if this is one, it is this is the so here you have large precision. And usual a cosine negotiation is the plus one. And if you put uh, the 1.5 pm effect, uh, we have just some chaotic behavior on the oscillation. <laughs> so uh, we may expect the dissociation uh, this also becomes chaotic on the angular scale. And why this is interesting for you <laughs> is suppose we assume M3 And then for the inner binary, uh, the AOT it is a several things. <laughs> and uh, so this this part uh, is chaotic boundary. Below this, uh, the system uh, is chaotic. And uh, <coughs> this one is a relativistic precession, which I discussed. In a binary, it comes relativistic, so k rotation does not occur. Uh, yeah. So uh, k rotation occurs uh, below the CD. Yeah. Yeah. At uh, length, clean precession, uh, in this case, uh, this is coming to the Right. Beyond this, then the precession becomes important. If the Thomas graph for it, I don't know. So, suppose if you start from here uh, and then emit the branch away, so this time becomes small, so it's just evolution from this way. And at some point, it's coming into the precession. So, then the association becomes. Uh, okay. So if this is the case, it's very interesting. <coughs> this is what it is. <coughs> so <coughs> for the future issue, uh, the hierarchical people systems, uh, in an inspired phase, uh, <coughs> uh, we just discussed the uh, one PM effect. Okay. So uh, right now I'm working on this black hole around the binary uh, black hole and supermassive. We may have another way. And margin phase we may use in three days. And one important question is the event. <laughs> Uh, whether that's time to run a couple of 
And in the theorem of the system, uh, personally, I'm interested in this case, but uh, <coughs> the question is there is there any such functional property or not? This is not. So, in summary, it's a relatively significant system to the field of behaviors. And such unpredictable behaviors may affect on the observation of the observer. So, the question is how to observe such a system. We just use the compost field uh, in a spectrum. In a spectrum. And <laughs> the uh, binary system with partial company may be interesting. We may observe the electricity systems as well as scale oscillation, diagram, and waves. Thank you very much. Thank you very much and very well timed as well. So we have some time for questions. Yes. You don't consider like uh, wave effects on the system. Wave so meter. Like um, but cleansing, cleansing gravitational wave cleansing. No, we didn't consider it. And yeah, it's, of course it's not. Yeah, we didn't consider it. And uh, but it should be one. Well, I don't know at this moment. Yes, maybe possible. Important. Yeah. More questions? Yeah. The, <clears throat> the gyroscopic effect, mm -hmm. general, general relativistic, mm -hmm. is the, the Sitter effect. Mm -hmm. uh, it is equivalent? Uh, yeah, in some sense, yes. It's, uh, yeah. And uh, so, uh, from your work, uh, I understood that uh, the spin of a particle or a star has, in itself has no effect in chaos in two-body systems. Well, the, what I said is just uh, depending on the situations. So, if you are interested in only the binary coalescence, yeah. Uh, maybe just we cannot find the, uh, you know, the chaotic behavior of such a system. But because the system is non integral, there's another way to see, you know, some effect. I don't know, just yeah. I understand. Okay. Yes. This is possible to see the same results in analytical form. Analytical form. Mm -hmm. Well, in some sense, what is what I'm doing now, <laughs> not not exactly, but just uh, the, I'm right now looking at just supermassive black hole with binary. And uh, but just the supermassive black hole is supermassive, so just it gives the background, say shiva shield or car black hole, and then put the binary. And then just you can lie down the basic equation. So this is what I'm doing. I don't know whether we can find an analytic solution or not, but the system is rather easy compared with these three body systems. Uh, I think one of the first populations where you can find a lot of these events eventually is on the, the, the population of black holes around the supernatural mm -hmm. which means you could have binaries, uh, triple systems in different directions, but you could, you could have other ones, right? Uh, yeah. And, uh, I, I, like, you know, two uh, two binaries go around and so on. Uh, mm -hmm. You find this example star, I would guess that you could have quite complex systems. It would be easy to it'd be difficult to generalize, I imagine, to, to other systems like the two binary couple or like say, let's say, or five or five particles couple. Uh, the generalization. I, I think you will say you go to the so coordinate for, for, system, but yeah. For example, just if it's uh, say one p up to one pm, huh? the right now the basic equation is easy, and maybe numerical analysis is also not so difficult, but since the system is chaotic, maybe analysis is difficult. Yeah. 
what we can choose yeah, from the data. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so I have a live question. Can you go back to the house data curve in the frame? So, because I need to. Oh, yes. So, we show then the when uh, the eccentricity is going to that, then the break will come. Mm -hmm. But then uh, again, the, the because of the station, eccentricity is going to small. But the, why do you know? No second change of the yeah, here to the second change. Oh, well, yeah, it will go beyond. Oh, yes, yeah. because this because this slope is <coughs> it's quite difficult to oh, see the change okay. in just in this way. Okay. Yeah, it's quite periodic. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, then, fine. Also, uh, maybe the candidate going to the other plots for other candidates for other Yeah. More questions? Well, maybe in that case, I can ask one. So you mentioned uh, potentially using numerical simulations for the merger part of, of uh, triple systems, is that correct? Potential. Uh, hmm? Potential, sorry. Uh, like using numerical simulations yes, for the yes, merger. Yes, 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 yes. Um, do you have an idea, what would you expect to be the most difficult part to deal the, to describe or to set up uh, from your experience? I'm sorry, I do not, uh, I have not do this by myself. My okay. colleague did. Fair enough, fair enough. So I do not know so much about the medics. No problem. Thank Sorry you. Sorry for that. <laughs> I think the question that I'm going to do is to try to use that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that kind of, when they do the high line, the high line, the it's too close to be used by one of these, right? Because they can't afford to do it. But if it's, mm -hmm. yeah. But at least, they did what can be done. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Last chance? No? Okay, then let's take a speak again. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. 